I had somebody come at me in the comment section saying that this watch wasn't worth it and the movement was garbage and this and that. And I'm like, all right, nobody was asking your opinion, but mm -hmm. don't buy it. Then. I never get when people you. take the time for that. Yeah, it's like, then just don't buy it. Exactly. Right. Move along. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of SoCal Watch Reviews. I am Miguel, episode 55. P. Ross, how you doing? Yo, what's going on? It's your boy P. Ross, back in the building for another one. Hey, P. So, I'm very excited. We, we it's, it's December, it's almost holidays, and, and the whole family gets together, and we had to bring our brother. Why don't you introduce him? I mean, obviously, it's not an introduction. It's just a welcoming do your thing, P. Ross. Right, right, right. You know, uh, Fred is alumni. You understand what I'm saying? Of the SoCal Watch Reviews podcast. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? We, we really like to consider him still a member of the SoCal Watch Reviews podcast. All the time. So give it up for the homie. Fredrico used to look like Mr. Mercury, but that's dumb. <laughs> but he's back in the building. Fred from Shalu. So what's up, homie? What's up? What's up, man? That intro is nice. Where were those intros when I first started with the podcast? <laughs> I don't. I don't I see, know, man. I see y'all have upped your game since since the last time I was on. No. But thank you for the great introduction. It's great to be back. Thank you both of y'all for uh, making space for me. I feel like I'm that I'm that relative, you know, who visits at the holidays. He just sort of pops in every now and again. <laughs> right. You know? Right. You're welcome anytime. And buddy. you're right. It, it is, it is you know, holidays is a time for family, so I'm glad to be back, especially for another Christmas episode. I remember the one we did last year was a lot of fun. Yeah, absolutely. And I know we, we did this one a little bit late. Obviously, it's like one week before Christmas. But hey, just like everybody else, last minute shoppers, we had to do a last minute episode. But it's all good. It's all good. You have Amazon, right? So uh, yeah, we got some interesting things. How you been, Fred? I've been good. I've been good. It's uh, starting to get cold over here. And uh, okay. so I've been uh, up in my complaints about that, as I tend to do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but apart from that, you know, just keeping busy, keeping busy with work as much as I can, keeping busy with the channel and enjoying rediscovering new corners of my apartment that I've now been stuck in for eight months. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's I know mm -hmm. it's, it's been so long, man. It's like I think California is, I, I say, I think we're back in lockdown because nobody listens anymore. Nobody cares. They're sick and tired. Everybody just goes out and they, they, they just don't care. I was just out with my family mm. today, as a matter of fact, uh, about an hour ago, packed, stores packed, restaurants packed. Everything is just packed. Now, granted, you cannot eat inside the restaurant, but there's lines outside and there's people eating outside. And it's just like, it's like back to normal, yet COVID cases are up. So I, I'm... I just don't get it, you know, but whatever. It is what it is. It's a new normal, you know, so. Oh, yeah. How's, yeah. how's India? How's India? Is it the same? Is it getting worse? It's the same. Like, I think for the most part, India has kind of given up on trying to control it. Like, you see everyone's out and about like normal. Yeah. Cases mm -hmm. are insanely high. Yeah. Um, you know, you'll see every combination and permutation of, like, how not to wear a mask or just not <laughs> wearing it. Like, you know, you'll see see people not wearing it you'll see hanging on the neck hanging off people's ears there's the classic nose out there's like the mask right. that's too small like you see it mm -hmm. all here you know so uh not exactly confidence inspiring to go out so yeah. lots of ordering in amazon pretty much the, the hermit lifestyle <laughs> well i oh, yeah. I, I noticed that uh you've been staying super busy in your channel it's pretty cool you've been doing a lot of collaborations you had uh recently mr b uh, you had engineer wannabe you guys talked about some amazing topics so that's cool man i mean I, I i like to see that on your channel that you're kind of embracing the collapse and it, it just how do you feel why, why did you start doing that as opposed to just doing the the thing you used to do in front of the camera uh if i'm being really honest it was out of necessity um just because like since i can't really go out much and i can't travel anymore i haven't been able to get hands on watches so like it was just sort of okay how can i still you know, bring some value to the content I bring without actually having the watches hands on. So if I'm not experiencing the watches myself, then at least, you know, be able to 
um, you know, share other people's experience with it. So I started sort of looking out for like little topics and niches of like, all right, who's someone who can really talk well on this? Like, so with Mr. B, he's had his speedy for, um, for I think like eight years. And I was like, all right, yeah, you know, like I like the speedy and I respect it, but like I wanted to really get to know from someone who was really ingrained in it. What is it that makes it so special? Same sort of thing uh, with the video yeah. I just put up with engineer wannabe, you know, Grand sake or I've only reviewed one of them. Right. And it's a brand that has so much sort of depth to it and following. I wanted to get someone who had that strong experience and it's talk on it. Um, so that's sort of how it came out, you know? So now I'm just sort of looking around thinking, all right, what are, what are topics, what are areas where, you know, I've found people or where I know people that are sort of what I would call, I guess, authorities on the subject or at the very least, you know, have a strong experience in it that I can get you know them to come on so that I can still share experience even if it's not necessarily mine and for me it's a learning experience as well you know like for me the best thing about having a channel is learning and discovering yeah so I'm right the cool thing is I'm right there with the audience it was kind of like um like when I had you on my Spanish channel you know and we we're talking about affordable watches again yeah. you know like right. that's a segment I just don't know a lot about but still want to learn about and still want to share with the audience sure. so yeah so like it's it's pretty much like very topic focused. You know, I find a topic or find a person and see, all right, what can they sort of bring to the channel that I can't bring? And then that's kind of how it happens. So I'm trying to do sort of uh, one of those every month when I can. Um, but obviously like the main focus is making sure, all right, is it really sort of fitting within sort of the, uh, I guess sort of the criteria that I'm trying to make for this collaboration type of thing. So it's always something new and fresh for the channel. Yeah. So, sure. so would you? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I just said for sure. <laughs> oh, okay. So, with you checking out the affordable sector, is there any affordable watches that you think you want to check out, or what? Uh for me, like realistically, and I don't want to sound snobbish when I say this, but most likely I probably won't end up getting any of them. But like for me, it's just interesting. You know, it's about broadening my knowledge more than anything. And like I um. Like I told Miguel when I first approached him about uh, going on the Spanish channel, I think I even said in the video, you know, like at the end of the day, talking about watches, if I'm going to be on a YouTube channel talking about watches, I can't afford to be ignorant, you know, and that means I got to know about all watches. I can't know about, like, I can't talk about, for example, mid-range luxury without knowing what's above it and below it. I can't talk about, you know, like when you're talking about entry-level luxury without knowing you know, what is that competing with, you know, and what other things um, bring more value to it? You know, something I learned, like talking more about it with Miguel was stuff like the Seikos bring a ton of value that make you think a lot of those watches, they're in sort of the, I'd say about 800 to about 1500 uh, category on retail pricing. A lot of those, it's like, you know, uh, are they really where they should be in this segment or should they maybe be pushing them down because Seiko is giving them strong competition. But it also gave me a lot of context in terms of understanding what Seiko is doing now with stuff like um, the LX line, where that's borderline Grand Seiko pricing. But when you know that in the context of their entire range, what they've been offering for years, then it kind of makes more sense. So, so yeah, like for me, it was really, really insightful. Um, but it's mostly a knowledge exercise in terms of future buys. Like for the most part, I'll probably stick to sort of where I'm at and sort of like that mid-level luxury i guess like it's it's always always relative you know because there's people who are loaded who like for them entry level is like 20 grand <laughs> you know I, right. i'm not quite there yet but yeah like for now at least in terms of my collection i'll probably stay uh roughly where it is now but at the end of the day this is a pretty addictive hobby i, I wouldn't put it past me if i'm in a store and if i if i can afford it if i see a cool seiko or something like that i might actually be tempted especially now knowing a bit more about them you know yeah, right, for sure. For sure. You know what? We forgot to do a wrist check, guys. Fred, what are you rocking? Today, I've got my Cartier Pasha C timer on a black Safiano leather strap. Very but then, nice. about it in winter, is I can wear leather straps again. Is Very that nice. the one you got made for that? The strap you uh, got this made is for? One that? of the ones I got made. Okay. For that. I've had okay. three made for this now. So I oh, got the black damn. one, I got the blue crocodile print, and then I also have a sort of brown or tan, like Hermes style one as well. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Very nice. P. Ross. Certina cool. DS podium on the uh, Strap Co. Perforated rubber strap. Oh, very, very nice. nice. Very yeah. nice. So I am wearing my one of my affordable grails. I, I guess affordable to me. 
uh, the Seiko SPB143 on an Artham cell cloth strap with a deploying buckle. So nice. Oh, that's nice. nice. Yeah. Nice. It's, it's, a, it's a great piece, man. So, but you hit the nail on the head. Uh, I like what you said, right, about Seiko and what they bring to the table. And something interesting that Engineer Wannabe uh, kind of hit on, and probably he didn't even realize he was hitting on uh, the hit home for me, is I know the guy has had crazy watches in his collection, right? So the Zenith El Primero was one of them that when he had it, I, I, I knew him. Obviously, he's a friend of mine. And I always loved that watch. I was like, man, so much history. I mean, it's an incredible looking watch. But he got rid of it to get a Grand Seiko, right? Because to him, it's like Grand Seiko represented more value. So you're right. You know, it's like, are these higher end watches even worth the money? Now, I'm not saying that Zenith is not worth the money incredible watches but really when you compare watches in a more affordable sector what they bring to the table as opposed to the more expensive counterparts it's like well what, what really are you paying for you know in some cases it's obvious but in a lot of cases it's, it's just the branding you know so i don't know <laughs> fred yes, is sir. thinking fred is thinking hmm. no I like <laughs> but i think the thing is like for me like i think branding is part of it but i think like you know me, I think shit on probably too too many different levels to think about. Like yeah, yeah. when you think about pricing, a lot of that when you're talking retail pricing, you got a factor, and a lot of that is distribution. It like that's not really branding, but it adds to your price. Correct. You know, it's one of the, the reasons overhead. why pre-owned prices, for the most part, um, are much lower than uh, than retail pricing because the distribution networks are different. They don't that right. marketing spend has already been done, but also there's stuff like development. There's a lot of times you realize that maybe you're paying forward for certain developments. Like um, when I was doing that segment on Rolex pricing and I was thinking to myself, why do they increase their prices every year a little bit? Part of it is inflation, but also looking at something like, um, you know, the rollout of the new Submariner and they've pretty much killed off the 3135 movement. Probably the last few years from when that movement was released, they probably kept raising the prices on the 3135 equipped ones to sort of pay forward what it costs to develop three, two, three, five. So like, those are all things that contribute to the price as well, which is value. But at the same time, I can definitely see where you're coming from that, you know, there is inherently certain perceptions and also like companies will use their pricing as a marketing exercise. You know, they use it as a way to yeah. as much as covering their costs and, you know, getting their bottom line and their profit and whatnot. Also just as a way to position their, their product, you know, if, Sometimes there's a perception that something, if it's cheaper, will be inferior. But like you, you guys and I both know, that's not necessarily the case. You know, something being cheaper doesn't necessarily mean it's less quality or less advanced. Correct. Correct. Well, what's True your that. okay? So what's your what's your thoughts on uh, Seiko trying to move up market and and charging a little bit more expensive for their for their watches? Do you have any thoughts on that? Um, I think that it's. It, it's something that you said actually when we spoke back on my Spanish channel was that in many ways they've kind of been giving everyone a bit of a deal for the last few years in terms of how much value they put in their watch and probably giving them, um, I guess the uh, probably giving themselves the short end of the stick, you know, with how much value they were bringing to their watches. And so I think them moving up market is sort of them kind of getting their due sort of you know making sure that they they're starting to get what they deserve but at the same time if you look at some of the models that they're putting it in you know like those lx models they have the spring drive in them and that's not yeah. i don't imagine it's a cheap movement to make and like so they're, they're backing it up you know they're not just jacking up the price up for the fuck of it you know they're actually putting something in there but still offering towards the entry level segment as well because i mean right now what's i know the upper end of their pricing would probably be around four or five grand what's the entry level Seiko currently available like at retail now is what maybe a few hundred bucks i imagine still it's it's close to 300 bucks with the Seiko five so yeah. we have the four mm -hmm. hour movement in it but i mean as opposed to the old Seiko fives you could pick them up for 50 bucks right p but yeah. obviously it had a 7s26 movement and didn't have sapphire didn't have this didn't have that right. so a lot of people complain like, well, they should have done this years ago, you know, put all these specs because micro brand watches are doing it. And it's, it's, it's different, right? You can't compare a micro brand watch to a huge corporation because like you said, Fred, there's this distribution, there's marketing, there's overhead micro brand companies. They literally go direct 
to the consumer kind of, you know, um, so they, they cut out the middleman and I hate to say that, you know, but it, it's true. <laughs> ways. They cut out the middleman to get you luxury. You've been watching too much Teddy Baldessar. It's Filippo Loretti, baby. <laughs> no, but it's true. You know, it's true. And, 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 uh, with that kind of like, let me segue into something that P Ross and I've been, been talking about, and we wanted to kind of share this with our audience, both on the podcast, if you're listening and, and on the YouTube channel, if you're watching, thank you so much is, um, getting our affordable grails. And um, I don't know if you've experienced this, Fred, because I know you're the type of guy that really saves for that one watch that you really want. And, uh, and, 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 and maybe you could relate a little bit, but basically what we've been saying is um, a watch doesn't have to cost you an arm and a leg for you to appreciate it and furthermore for it to be a grail. And we have two perfect examples, the watches we're wearing, where we kind of want to go a little bit into what they mean to us and what they are and kind of bring some light to them. Uh, but uh, yeah, Fred, do you, do you, um, do you see yourself getting like an affordable grail or what do you consider an affordable grail? I guess, let me ask you. I mean, like obviously everything. And like, again, when we start talking about affordable, it ends up being relative. But one thing right, I think that course. you touched on that was really good was that about a grail doesn't necessarily have, have to be connected to price. Correct. You know, I think, correct without getting too uh, philosophical about it, you look at the origin of like the term grail talking about like King Arthur and all that. Like it's, it's more about the pursuit, you know, King Arthur wasn't trying to get the Holy grail because it cost a lot of gold. You know, it was, be it was the pursuit. It was the difficulty of getting it. So in that sense, I think that definitely price isn't connected to, um, to whether something can be a grail or not. It can be just something that's really hard to find. Like with my pasta, for example, well, it took me a long time to find one, to find a physical example, to be able to try it on. And that for me, like for me, this is a watch I absolutely love. And it's apart from my Steinhardt, the cheapest watch I've ever bought, you know, doesn't mean it was necessarily cheap. I don't think I, I could really call it affordable with a straight yeah. face. People would say I'm being a bit presumptuous, but, <laughs> but like compared to my, but like being compared to my Omega compared to my Tudor was cheaper than both of them, right. you know? So, but for me, this is a grail because of the pursuit of it, not because of how much I paid for it and because of how much I like it and how distinct it is. So I can definitely see where you guys would come from with the notion that, yeah, you can definitely get an affordable grail. It doesn't have to be something you sell a kidney for. CP, so, something that I love about uh, Fred, he's so knowledgeable. He's dropping knowledge about grails. <laughs> oh, yeah, the always. Origin, <laughs> the origin of a grail. I didn't even know that. Always. Here I am like, look like a dummy, man. I don't ha, know ha, what you're talking about. But. Ha, have you watched his video on how to change a watch strap? Yes, I have. <laughs> now that video, we all know how to change watch straps. Yeah. But Fred, although we knew what he was saying, it seemed like he added something extra to that. You know what I mean? <laughs> something something that was so smooth and so suave, like, damn, for real? <laughs> Yo, it was I have to I'm say I struggled to keep that that video under 10 minutes. <laughs> I, I come to realize I'm shit at being concise. <laughs> <laughs> like the amount the amount of stuff i cut from my videos because like i'm just rambling too that much is amazing i, I cut off at least 25 to 30 percent every time i record That's just kind of talk too much awesome That's video insane, awesome video yeah great video, Thank you, man, man. I, I like the different angles and everything and it's, it's hard you know i was looking at your video thinking oh man how many different shots did he have to take and stop the camera and record again or how many different cameras does he have how did the editing go? right i'm thinking of things like that because i i I'm on YouTube and, and a lot of people take it for granted. And that I, I hate that, you know, it's like, here's the thing. And I think we could all attest to this. Everybody on this podcast and YouTubers that are listening to this, how much work goes into this and people have such a hard time subscribing to the channel. They stop by, they see the, the video, they maybe get a, give it a thumbs up, maybe give mm -hmm. a comment, but they don't subscribe. It's like, Oh my God, is it right. really that difficult to subscribe? It's not like, and, a, and it's free. It's free, yeah. it's freaking free. <laughs> you know what I mean? A, a ton, you know, and once you get monetized, it's not like it's a lot of money, but a little bit of money helps to buy lights, to buy a better camera, to buy a memory card, to buy a stand, to buy whatever, you know, it's like, it's, I don't know, it's frustrating to be honest with you. And like P Ross, like he's been doing this for as long as I have, and he has yet to hit a thousand subscribers. It's like pretty unfair. Cause I mean, I just don't know why people don't, don't subscribe you know it's not that difficult <laughs> yeah it takes it takes a lot of patience i think we can all relate that like just that weight 
for like every time it subscribes and like i'm always looking and i'm like well, why isn't it doing more why isn't yeah. it doing more than last month or the month before right or you know like why is the pace not increasing at the same rate or like right. it's it's always it's never enough but at the end of the day like for me it's that's kind of a motivating factor as well it's like all right, just keep pushing harder and then the payoff mm-hmm. is then when you look at all right where was i this time last year this time six months and it's like oh okay no, that that makes sense that but yeah in the day-to-day it's definitely frustrating. I can definitely relate. And you're right. Like it's hard earning every single subscriber, but that just makes it that much more satisfying when you do. And, you know, I think the people who end up succeeding on this are the people who stay in it. You know, I, I tried my best going into this thinking, all right, this isn't going to make me a lot of money. And, you know, this, uh, this might not even take off, but fuck it. I want to learn about watches. And this is a good driver for me to keep constantly learning about them. So I just try and have fun with them as much as I can. Well, yes, sir. I'm just going to be transparent and I've been transparent from the, from the beginning with, with the audience, with you guys, with everybody. I started off this whole journey with the same mentality, right? Like I, I didn't want to talk about watches my wife because she was tired. So I wanted an outlet, right? So it was all fun and games in the beginning, but then I started to, um, I guess, diversify, open my Spanish channel, then the, this podcast, and then I'm, uh, Instagram now. I mean, it's it's crazy. It's gotten to the point where this is almost like a part-time job because when I'm not doing one thing, I'm doing another. I'm recording B-roll. I'm taking pictures. And this is where I'm having a problem, right? So where I'm having a problem for me, it's like I'm growing, maybe not at the rate that I want to, but where, where I'm having a problem is I have a five-year-old boy And I've caught myself and my wife has caught me several times where it's like, Miguel, you, are you going to do this watch thing the whole entire day? Because your son wants to play with you. You're, you're not spending time with the family and I catch myself and it's true, but it's like, I can't keep up. I need to do this. I have watches in for review that are not my watches, you know, that I need to put the content out and I just cannot keep up. But it's like one of those things like, okay, well, what do I do? Do I just half-ass my work? Because that's not the way I do things do I just tell the people here, take your watches back? I don't want them. Or it's, it's a balance, right? And I have a full-time job as well. So it's like, I I find it very, very frustrating because it's like, I'm putting in so much work and so much effort and the reward is just not paying off, you know, but I don't know, man. I I just, I don't know. I just got to keep grinding. Yeah, no, it's true. Like it's the, the amount of effort escalates very quickly. Like for me, it's, it's the same thing. Cause like, I'm always very self-critical and I'll, I'm always looking at, all right, how can I make this video better than the last one? And it's the same thing at the end of the day, I mean, do, for the most part, doing something better will require more effort. And in most cases, more time as well. Yeah. And just like you say, it escalates quicker. You know, you start thinking, okay, I'll just make, you know, make one video or make one video a week or whatnot. But then it's like, all right, but for that video, you also have, <laughs> you know, different shoots. You have, yeah. uh, you have the research mm-hmm. behind it. You have the Instagram to promote it, you have the outreach, which I'll admit I fucking suck at doing outreach on social media. <laughs> but but like it, it's still, and that's something that that you do really well. My God, I see you like you know commenting all that. I don't have the patience to do that. It's a lot um, of work, man. You have to, you have to, you know. But yeah, and yeah, it, it just keeps adding up. But um, but yeah, like like I've always told you, like when we talk privately and on the podcast, you know, just keep up with it because. At the end of the day, like I said, it's the people who stay. I think they're the ones that end up getting uh, getting the reward for it. And and definitely just don't forget why you got into it. Like that for me has been a big motivator, especially when I had shit months, was just remembering why I'm in it. Yeah. No, good advice, man. Appreciate yeah, sure. it. Well, P. Ross, why don't we talk about your affordable grail? I'll talk about mine and then what everybody came here for the christmas list so what, what did we say three three gifts each under 500, bucks 500 I, yeah okay cool so three fred three p three me and yeah. 500 bucks each or less right right cool 500 or less so p ross is that talk total about, or per gift per gift right per gift okay. per gift all right P. Ross, let's talk about your Certina, man. Uh, uh, let's, let's talk about it. Let's talk wanna, about it. Do you want to give them a little story of what happened? So, uh... well, well, what what was crazy about it was that it wasn't even on my radar, right? So, yeah. I think we was talking, or you sent me a message, or we were on the phone. We were, so we, we we were, were on, on the phone. phone. I was I was working. I was on my Bluetooth. Yeah, I don't know what you were doing, but right. you were on the phone. We were talking about something. You were talking about watches, and I'm like. You told me, right? Like, hey, have you seen this one? This watch? I've been looking at it. Hey, send it to me. And I saw it. Right. I'm like, well, what about, have you, 
you know it's Tertina, right? And you're like, yeah, right. of course I know Tertina. I'm like, honestly, in my opinion, right. they're an undervalued company that Swiss made. And I believe in my humble opinion that people are sleeping on it. You know, um, right, right. I, I don't know why it's not so popular. I think some models are really attractive. And I remember seeing something on Joma Shop. And I'm like, let me send you the link so you could see what I'm talking about. Because I think it's a pretty attractive watch. And I think it brings a lot of value to the table for the amount of money that you can pick it up from. So right, right. I sent it to you. Craziest thing, Fred. So I had P. Ross on the phone. And he's always very talkative. So I send him this. Silence. Yeah. He's like, hold on. (laughs) And I'm like, crickets. Hey, P. You there? And I'm like, oh no, I think the the, the, the phone the, the the phone call got 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 lost. And then he goes, huh? I'm like, well, you are there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, oh my god. Right. I never seen this before. Like, I knew right. immediately. I'm like, yeah, he was literally he was speechless. Right. It was it was crazy. I never really experienced that from Pierre Ross. Right. And I'm like, all right. He's like, I think I need to pick this up. Not kidding. The next morning, he calls me. I bought it. <laughs> oh wow. My, wow. But the, the, the thing about it was, me and we were going back and forth because I think you like the gray dial. Yeah, I, I think like the gray dial, right? And I and I kept saying silver dial, silver dial. And you like, no, ain't no silver dial. I'm like, it's a silver dial, man. And I'm like, silver dial. And when I saw it, it was like I instantly like connected with it. Yeah. And in my mind, I'm like. And then it's a, a retail is seven hundred and thirty dollars, right? You know what I'm saying. So it was lower than that. So I was like, "Oh my god, I can't let this pass. I can't let this pass." So I picked it up that morning and been loving it ever since, man. For sure. That's very nice. You see, you, That's you so cool. The, you see the tear going down my eye, <laughs> man. The tears of joy. You can tell, like, it's a good thing about Zoom, like the body language, everything you tell, like, it's. You seem visually affected by this. Right. I was just quiet. I, it was like I had met Prince. You know <laughs> wow. what I mean? That level. Wow. It was, I know it was, how big wow. Prince fan you are. It, it, it was that level. I was quiet. And I said, this wow. thing is beautiful. And it was giving me a Rolex Explorer vibes. Like, oh, my God. Okay. Like It was like I was, ooh. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, ooh. what has do do you do you remember the specs? So you could just kind of spit them out for the people listening. It's yeah, a, it's a it's a, a thirty eight millimeter has the Etta movement in it. I think it's two two eight two four dash two. Um, it, oh, came yeah, I saw the it came on a stainless steel bracelet, a uh, sapphire crystal. Uh, the uh has a case see through case back, but that's not sapphire. But it's all good though. You know what I mean? The bracelet is excellent though on this thing it is great so yeah it's about 11 millimeters thick loom is off the chain Three specs. oh my god lord have mercy and it's called <laughs> the certina ds podium right ds podium yeah yeah you have pictures on that on your instagram you made yes, a video sir. of it too right so yeah uh-huh yes sir so uh, that is pretty cool so, it's interesting though like how like sometimes a watch can just like have that effect you know it's like that love at first right. sight yeah yeah sure. well, that's, that had ne- that had never happened to me before though yeah the, the like thing, that you, you want to share with them p ross i was gonna say and i was gonna share how many watches you buy and i'm not trying to throw you under the bus or anything but people listening like yes you are p ross no no no, no. you're like, trying to say he's horologically promiscuous <laughs> Ooh, he's yes, calling he me a, he's yes, calling he me a whore <laughs> oh, you're a watch whore. Is what he's doing. <laughs> No, right, right. No, honestly, P, you buy watches on a weekly basis. Don't don't kid I, yourself. It's still sounding condescending, man. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so check it out. He buys watches on a weekly basis because he's always, I feel like P. Ross is always like falling in love, falling in love, or like, oh, this is hot, this is hot, which there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that's what he likes. But I have never seen P like this. Even when you got your Omega, like your vintage Seamaster, I know you were in love with that, but right, right, right. This is different. I don't know why this right. is different, but I'm I'm so I, happy I for don't, you. I don't I don't know either, man. Because like and I, I ain't even thought about buying another watch. I'm just that's that's wow. a crazy thing. That's you know what I mean? literally sounds like he found the one. Right. Which you is crazy because so. he wasn't even looking for the one, but he saw it and he knew. He knew immediately that's but what that, it was. that's always how it is. Yeah. When you're not looking for it, then that's when it hits you. 
Yeah. My wife, my wife said another one. I said you ain't gonna have to worry for a long time. <laughs> You're gonna have to worry for a long time. So it's all good. Nice. Well, well, actually, actually, I'm getting <laughs> another. I'm getting another watch that I made a deal with uh, Omar last month before I got this one. Right, so, a friend of the channel. Okay, know, that I, 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 I have to keep that commitment. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, no, that doesn't you know, count then. Yeah, you know, time so, of the sneakers you know, and watches. Yeah. Shout out to my boy. Right. Yeah, it doesn't count. He got it before right. the, the Certina came along. Oh, so and, and then I got the Flieger from... uh. Right, but that was before. That don't count either, so that don't... That yeah, don't he count. got a 1111 sale, right? AliExpress. AliExpress. Yeah, yeah, he got this Flieger watch. 50 yeah, bucks? Fi 60 bucks? 50 bucks. 50 bucks, uh, yeah. Fred. NH35, I mean... Yeah, uh, I Sapphire I Crystal. It. That one, yeah, uh -huh. oh, yeah, look. yeah, yeah, yeah. I fell into that, so yeah, it's cool. But but the, the and this is a, the craziest thing. So he got the Certina watch, and this one hadn't even come in. That Flieger watch had not come in, and I, I asked him like, "You looking forward to it?" He's like, "Yeah," but honestly, I my Certina said so. That watch, the Flieger one, came after the Certina, like literally delivered right. after. And P. Ross, honestly, all he keeps talking about is Zertina. Like he, he's like the 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 Zertina, I guess, uh, not fanboy. I guess the uh, the spokesperson for Zertina in the watch world. Right? There's not <laughs> right. a lot of people that represent Mito, right. Zertina, you know, brands like that. Rado. Right. I mean, not because when I when I got it, I said I'm gonna make this watch mine. You know what I mean? Like when people think of the DS podium, they're gonna think of me. Pete Ross. It's going to be the Pete Ross. I'm going to push this mother to the max. Well, I you know mean, what I mean? Pete Ross, who else do you know that owns a Cartier uh, Pasha? Like, I don't... Right, I'm right, really, yeah. <laughs> that's right. Fred all day, baby. That's oh, yeah, Fred yeah, for day. sure. Absolutely. You know? Pagani yes, Design is me all day. Pagani Design, you know? You know? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, man I'm, mm -mm. I'm that's just right. Kidding. You own that, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. No, so for me, one of, one of the watches, and, and honestly... This thing has really, it's, it's funny, same effect that P. Ross has had with that watch, with the Zertina, this watch has had on me, oh crap, stuck on my headphones, here it is. So mm. uh, unboxing review of this watch on my channel. Honestly, I haven't even thought about getting another watch. It's weird. I'm always thinking of getting other watches. I'm always in love with something else. I've had this for three weeks, P. Ross. Yeah. Uh -huh. Going on a month, three weeks. Right. Honestly, no desire whatsoever right. to get another watch. And you know what was crazy about that was when I ordered mine, you hadn't got that yet. Right. So you when got you, yours before. No, you got yours before time. me. Okay. And, okay. and when you got it, you say, oh, it's the Certini. And I was just kind of like, oh, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was waiting like, for the Certino. Uh, I think I ordered it on a Wednesday and it got here like that Monday. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it wasn't that. It wasn't that. It wasn't that long. But when he got his, I'm like, damn, where mine at? Yeah, you know <laughs> what I mean. Like, but that's a, uh, that's the funny thing that we 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 talked about it, right? And we're like, you know what? This is so crazy that we both watched, both got like uh, affordable Grail watches without really knowing it was our Grail watch because right. I had seen this watch drop in June. The SP, by the way, SPB one four three. In case you're listening to this, and I've seen it, you know, and I saw the case shape, and I was like, okay, sixty two MAS. I'm a fan. Always been a fan of that. I, I can never afford it. It's too expensive, and I'm scared to get a Franken watch too because they're older watches. You know what I mean? So. I always liked that case ship. And then when I saw this, I was like, all right, it's a little out of my price range. It's a little over a thousand bucks. I can't afford it. But luckily I was able to sell some things. I moved the watch and I came up with the money and I was like, oh crap, I actually have the money for that. Should I get it? Should I not? And I was like, I, I'm just going to do it. And I did. And honestly, one of the best feelings I've gotten in a long time with a watch. Like, and, and, and honestly, I get compliments on this left and right. Cause this is a hot model, I guess right now or something. I don't know, but my video is doing incredible too. Is doing a lot of good things for my channel, which is crazy. And I th that's not why I got the watch, obviously. And and what's something that I said in, in the review, which is true, 100%, I said, since I was a little kid, the Rolex of Mariner has been the watch that I've been wanting to get. And it still is, right? But it wasn't never about the brand. It was about the aesthetic. I, it's just an iconic design for me that I like. So this doesn't look like a Rolex Mariner, obviously it looks different, but 
it, it it does resemble the first diver watch by Seiko, which Seiko is near and dear to my heart. So that goes a long way. And I just love the way it looks, the way it feels, the way it performs. It's giving me about 72 hours power reserve. Incredible. Wow. I mean, it's 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 great. Like I I'm, I just haven't been able to take it off. I just changed the straps on it and I'm happy like everything. And I feel bad for all my watches. They're just kind of like they don't get any wrist time now, you know? So Right, right. But it's I guess, a good looking watch though. Like I appreciate that. For some the funny thing is that is that I don't know if I'm alone in this, but when I see it, I get a lot of Tudor Pelagos vibes from I've it. I've I, heard that. Yeah. Okay, so at least I'm not alone in that. But yeah, I, like, I've heard that. But if but if you look at the the 62 MAS, I mean that's a long time ago, right? It's in the it's yeah in the six sixties. Yeah, it's in the sixties. So the Pelagos really maybe got its inspiration from the 62 MAS. You know what I mean? But yeah, no, yeah, yeah, I, I yeah, for sure. And like and. And like, obviously, like it's, you know, it's Seiko pulling from its own history books, but like, but yeah. yeah. And I think it's a very cool look. It's very sort of utilitarian. Yeah. But I think honestly, it's a good looking watch. I was surprised. Like when I watched the video, I was like, man, that's a solid looking watch. Like, it's just not what I expected. One of the crazy things, to be honest with you, Fred, is the way that it wears, I mean, six and seven eighth inch wrist. And it just fits so good. It's a 40, a, li- a hair over 40, the, the case. And it's like 46, 47 from lug to lug. So it's tiny. It's really not that big. How thick is it? Lug. Oh, crap. I forgot. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I forgot how thick it is. But it's not. It's nothing too crazy. It's a, it's a little bit thicker than the SKX or around the same. But nothing crazy, to be honest with you. And And the cool thing that I like about it, in my opinion, is the bezel. So it's a stainless steel bezel, but it's a, it's a flat color. But when you change it into different lights, it kind of changes from a matte to like a shine. It's weird. Mm. It's weird. I, I, I don't know. I'm just in love with this thing, man. And it, like I said, hopefully my love stays like this for a long time because I cannot spend more money on watches. My wife will kill me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm set for 2020 for sure. <laughs> Set for 2020, he says on December 14th. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I guess I guess to kind of wrap this up, and I'll, I'll give my thoughts, and if you guys want to pitch in. So again, a, a grail doesn't necessarily mean how expensive something is. It's just something that speaks to you. It could be a Timex. It could be an homage watch. It could be what whatever you want it to be. If a watch speaks to you on a certain level and, and it makes you feel a certain way, that's cool. You know, in my in my yeah. opinion, get it, buy it, enjoy it in good health and, and be happy with it. And don't care what anybody else thinks because everybody's going to have different opinions. I had somebody come at me in the comment section saying that this watch wasn't worth it and the movement was garbage and this and that. And I'm like, all right, nobody was asking your opinion, but... Mm-hmm. don't buy it then. i don't forget when for people you. take the time for that yeah it's like then just don't buy it exactly right. move along mm-hmm. yeah p ross what you, what you have to say man yo i, I agree 100 with you you know what i mean so get what you like get your grail watch of choice no matter what it is yeah you know that's just where i'm at with it because i never thought that this would make me feel like this you know what i mean so, right absolutely you know Fred, take it away, buddy. Yeah, like, I think you guys summarized it really well. You know, it's definitely not about how much you spend. It's about how a watch speaks to you. And I think even even though, like, in my case, for example, it was something that I knew I wanted it, but it just took a lot of effort for me to be able to find the right one. I think even in a sense, you can, just like you guys said, you can come across a girl without even knowing it. And to a degree, it's like you can't really – purposefully find what you're not looking for type of thing so in that sense i think that makes it even more special because it's just that right. that moment i'm glad for both of you guys that you were able to come across these thank you and have that sort of surprise uh that sort of surprise and that like sort of eureka moment that when you got it it's like wow and yeah and like but definitely like it, it's definitely not about what you spend it's about how the watch makes you feel and yeah as for what other people think it's like you know, it's your money. What the fuck, what the fuck does it matter what other people you? think of it? It's on your watch. <laughs> you know. Yeah, yes, no, sir. For sure. And, and to be honest with you, um, I know a lot of people look at these watches as investments, and I mean, I guess to a certain degree, I, 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 I could see that, right? Because it depends how much money you're spending, and you're like, man, to make a thousand dollars, let's say, let's use that as an example, a thousand bucks or five hundred bucks. 
it's a lot of money, man. 500 bucks is not something easy to come by. So to buy something and know that that something is going to devaluate or not keep its value, mm -hmm. it kind of hurts, right? But at the same time, don't let that be the deterring factor in you getting what you really like. If you really like that watch and you're not willing to spend, the, let's say, 500 bucks, then look for it in the pre-owned market or look for a mm -hmm. deal or wait or I don't know. I mean... What do you See, guys feel? I think though, though, like especially if you're talking grails, resale value definitely shouldn't matter, right? For shit, because because right. right. then definitely assumption should be you're getting it to keep it, Correct. so resale value should be completely irrelevant. You know, mm -hmm. like I, I always say, like I preach it all the time. The only thing resale matter, resale value matters for is deciding whether you're buying it new or pre-owned. That's it. Just knowing right. if you're going to save enough versus the retail price. Yeah, but like apart from that, like I still think that looking at watches as investments is stupid, because the ones that really appreciate and genuinely make money, a they're a pain in the ass to get at the retail price, so you that so then it like kills your margin, and on top of that, they have a high as fuck buy-in, so it's like all these right. people who are like, oh yeah, you know Rolex is like a Submariner is a great investment because you know the retail is like nine grand and pre-owned on the new one is like around 14 15 something like that. It's like yeah but you can't get it at nine and and then it's like to even get that incremental increase you have to buy in at what 13 14 if you're getting the pre-owned it's yeah. like mm -hmm. there's better ways if you're trying to make money there's better ways you can spend your money for me like oh, yeah, watches for sure. is, should definitely you shouldn't be spent you shouldn't be sinking that money into something that you that you're not willing to lose that money you know the payoff should be the pleasure you get from it. At least that's my opinion. No, I agree. Oh, I absolutely agree with that for sure. Thousand percent, man. Thousand percent. All right, guys. Well, let's move on to other things. And that is uh, Christmas gifts. So, yay. <laughs> oh, man. Christmas is one of those things. It's like it's, it's a nice season and a nice holiday. But, man, when you have a big family, oh, man. Just thinking of how much money you're gonna spend is like crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can. There are with two. That. There are two parts of the year that I really hate, and that's Christmas and tax season, because oh, people man. act like they have no damn sense whatsoever. You should have seen how crowded the mall was today. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, yep. and we have this. Uh, I don't know if y'all have them where y'all at. Uh, these tech stores called a micro center, where they just have yeah. like everything. Yep. And the line was backed up from the front all the way to the Apple section. Wow. You it was swear, ridiculous. Wow. You would swear they were getting tested for COVID or something. Right. Yeah. It was ridiculous. And I just walked in and walked right back out. And, <laughs> and I just kind of said, my mother-in-law ain't going to be getting that no time soon. Because if I have to wait <laughs> in that line, it's over with. You know what I mean? So Get it online, baby. Get it online. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. That's the move. That's the move. So. All right, Fred. So let's start with you. You're the guest. I'm, I'm curious to know what you pick. So three gifts each, 500 bucks or less. It's okay if you go over. We don't really care. But uh, take it away, man. What do what you got? All right. Should I go? All right. I'll, I'll go from worst to best. That sounds terrible, but I mean, it's just <laughs> I, know, I like I'm what like, I have right. in the end. So if you really but, uh... like your husband, if you kind of like your husband. <laughs> <if> you... <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it's has he been naughty or nice this, this year? That type of thing. <laughs> okay. All right. So first thing may seem simple, but everyone needs one. It's a springboard tool and not right. one of the tiny little shitty ones. This is one of the still not very expensive at all. This is about uh, 20 bucks. Let me just do a conversion. Yeah, less. 25. I'd say maybe 15. Burjon? On Amazon. What is 10, it? 15. No, this isn't Burjon. This is like... Just straight off of Amazon. Even the Bridge like, on they're 25 bucks, man. And they're the ones that the Swiss yeah. makers use. Uh, and the thing is, like, just like, I uh, hope the people on the video can see just like those slightly bigger ones, because there's the tiny yeah. ones that cost like all of like maybe four bucks. Yeah. yeah but those sure. break very easily. Like, I've gone through about three or four of those, just the forks, yeah. they whittle away over time. They do. When you use they them. do. These slightly bigger ones, they last a little bit longer. They feel a little bit more robust. It definitely oh, yeah. feels more expensive than it is. Yeah, for sure. So, for sure. so that's definitely something to start, something everyone needs. And, you Let know, it's a nice you. little upgrade because that everyone gets that. I think they get like that same basic. What yeah, those are the ones. So these little ones are one-sided. And these little forks right here, because they're cheap, 
stages mess up, especially if you change yeah. straps as much as we do. This yeah. is the same crap, but I'll show you what I got from Artham. So, got it, man out here with the Artham one. Yep, got it for free, but it's about thirty-five bucks from them or twenty something. But same thing, you know. Mm. Uh, yeah, it, it's a good one, and then you, you could uh, it changes these things out the little ends. Uh, so it goes from a little. Uh, so my one, my one looks like it unscrews, but it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Okay, yeah, it's yeah, that, pretty cool. Yeah, there, it's very tight. <laughs> it. Oh, that's anyway. Uh, yeah. So one side has a fork, and the other side has a little pin. So for cases that have the little holes, you just pin it in there, right? right. So I agree, yeah. Fred. That's a great gift. Yeah, everybody needs a, a solid, uh, a solid um tool. And and it's an easy thing to upgrade because I would say most people who have one will probably have those small little shitty ones that we all got with like you know the straps the the mm -hmm. yeah like you get you either get them with the straps or with like that initial toolkit that every watch collector gets when they very <laughs> right. first start yeah, you right, know right, the, right. the one that includes yeah. everything and the whole kit costs like 20 bucks and then, right. and then you get it and you realize why Cra yeah like this is what it includes like these little well what do you call this little not pliers those are plucking eyebrows bro yeah i mean these things are terrible this is what came with the amazon yeah. kit and I never. I try to use it once, and it just did not work. I'm like, what the hell is this? This is this is this is not good. This is not good. I'm at telling all. you, that got mixed in like maybe with like a beauty kit or something like that. No, actually, I do have factory. a I do have a beauty kit one. This is for for eyebrows, and I just I don't use this anymore, obviously for beauty reasons. But I use it for a lot of my my tools, and actually, this is pretty strong, pretty sturdy. This is kind of funny, but hey, it works. It's better than the other piece of crap. So yeah. So yeah. So that's the first one. Okay. Second nice. one is a straps called Milanese strap, Ooh. the mesh strap. This yeah, I got that one. Steel yeah, I got that one. At, I think I, twenty bucks. I just ordered one. So <laughs> thanks yeah. to you, Fred. It was because of your video that I ordered one. This was possibly the biggest surprise of the straps that I got sent. Was just how solid this is, and the good thing about Milanese is that it's a bracelet that you don't that doesn't matter as much that it doesn't integrate because it kind of is the look, and yeah. you know you can put it on any watch. This one comes with like a with a quick release. Mm -hmm. um, adjusting it isn't that hard. You do need like a tool or something to pry it open, but once you have the size set, it's pretty much easy. Cool. And and yeah, I've had this for I think now three weeks. I would be very concerned if it had issues in three weeks. But for what it costs, I wouldn't have been surprised, but it's still holding strong. So definitely something I recommend. And it's a completely different look. Like everyone's used to changing like leather straps, you know, and, um, and you know, rubber straps, NATOs. It's not every day you get a bracelet that you can put on pretty much any watch. So I'd say, mm -hmm. I'd say definitely that's something to look into. And especially because like, you know, there's so much excitement around mesh bracelets, you know, because of the no time to die, um, Seamaster, and then obviously right. what Breitling's doing with the Super Ocean Heritage. So yeah, definitely recommend that. I recommend yeah, your nice video one. too. You, nice you, yeah, his video was was great because you showcased that mm -hmm. strap on your Seamaster, and obviously it looks like the No Time to Die uh, Seamaster. Yeah, loved it. Yeah, no, it's really cool. I've been enjoying that. That sat on my Seamaster for quite some time. I only just took it off. Oh, okay. And last thing is. Uh, this is a series called Watches International. Nice. It's like a yearly. Okay. These are really cool because, so this one I have right here is volume 10. That's from 2009. They're really cool because like I'm interested in a lot of those sort of watches from the late 90s and the, and the sort of early to mid 2000s that okay. they were at that point where they're not old enough to be vintage. So people haven't bothered uploading information about them on the internet. Yeah, but at the same time, the industry wasn't really very tech savvy yet at that point. So you know, you can't find backdated websites and stuff like that, or online reviews at that time it was all just publications. So right. these are really, really good. They have one for like at least the last twenty years or so, for like each year. These are good because it shows you sort of what was new, what was released in those years. For most things, they give you pricing as well, because that's another thing. It's hard to find what the original retail pricing is on a watch from 10 years ago so right. i really like this just as a resource to find information but also just to explore and um and they don't cost a lot like some volumes are as cheap as about 10 bucks i think no the most way. expensive one i've seen is maybe 30 bucks mm. so amazon or ebay or how do you yeah amazon amazon so cool. the publisher is called tourbillon international if you just put that into amazon you should be able to find it and the series is called watches international 
Mm. Uh, they also do some, I think they have four or five just on grand complications. Uh, if you want to get something for the wife, they've got one, they've got a series on jewelry as well. Just really cool. And it, it's like, for me, it's cool. Cause this is like buying a watch magazine. Can you show us the inside what it looks like? I'm, I'm just curious yeah. to see if it has pictures or what is it? What yeah, is it? yeah. Yeah. So like, it's it's got like editorial stuff oh, as well that's cool. mm. um it's it's got oh, like nice. the old magazine style ads as well oh, that's and cool. then and then uh the main part is like for pretty much every brand they'll show you you know like the different models that they had new for that year mm. or oh. and like they'll show you the specs or talk about movements like i said it's a lot of um it's a lot of information that's just a lot harder to find on the internet because you know these aren't it, it's those watches that weren't maybe the star of that year. So there's tons of information, you know, it's like, at least with the research I do, like, you know, it's easy to find stuff on old Rolexes, but like, for example, when I did the research on my Cartier, I was a pain in the ass. I had to go to about like 15 different sites. Oh. You know, you have to go to different ones to double, mm -hmm. to like cross check, make sure the, the details are right. Yeah. So something like this is really cool. It's to get a window into an era that you don't hear or see very much of. And also you discover a lot of brands, like there are brands in here that don't exist anymore. So from it's the, from like, the nineties or eighties or. No, no, this is, um, this one's from 2009. So like they have, but they have, um, they have ones reaching back. I think as far as year 2000. So, so like I said, two thousands don't even exist anymore. Yeah. Independent. Exactly. Which is, what, what? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Independence, like small ones. Got it. But it's crazy seeing that, you know, for someone like me, I like discovering, you know, sort of the smaller niche brands or like models that no one talks about. For me, I just geek out about that. I just sit and read that on my couch, you know? That's so, cool. so definitely, definitely a great gift. And like I said, not very expensive. I think mm -hmm. I have a feeling I may actually be within a chance of my entire collection, my entire gift suggestion being cheaper than you guys is maybe. Okay. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you right, guys know great, what yours are. I don't. <laughs> great gifts. Great gifts. P. Ross, what you got, man? All right, then. That that magazine is something to look into, bro. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For sure. I I tried to go outside the box a little bit. I have a wooden phone docking station, but what's cool about this wooden phone docking station is you can put watches on it. You can put your AirPods on it, sunglasses, car keys. And all of that, you know what I mean? So, okay. you know, and it's right here. Yeah, that's, oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, and it's like, so you're full of your little accessory hub. Right, right. So it's going for about $52.77. On Amazon, right? On Amazon, and yeah. What is, what is it called for the people listening? It what, is what called, is it? Uh, it is by a company called Duro. It is a phone, wood phone docking station, nightstand organizer. Wooden bedside cell, blah 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 blah. Everything I just said. So, you know, so just is. type in blah 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 on Amazon. You should be able to find it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Not Duro, Duro, D U R O. Wooden careful, station. Just be careful when you type in Duro in bedroom. I'm just saying. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I don't know if P. Ross got it. Mm. Uh, yeah, our Spanish audience will get it. <laughs> we'll, we'll explain it. We'll explain it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. IP Ross. Um, my next one, my, my, my next one is, I don't know if they're going to be surprised by this, but the Certina <laughs> DS podium. The you watch itself. I agree. The watch itself. Yes. That, that would be a great gift under $500 yes. for someone to get. You know what I mean? Where can they find it? Joma they Shop can find it on Joma Shop still Joma. got them. Okay. But what, what 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 made me mad was when I got mine, they actually dropped the price of that one. What? Yeah, wow. after I bought it, they dropped the price. So, you know, it, it's it's at a better price right now. You should demand a partial refund. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> but that's my second one, okay. and my third one is four hundred and ninety nine dollars. Mm, oh okay. wow! Right in under the limit. And I don't I don't know why I like this so much, but. It is a new try automatic watch winder. Eight watches winding boxes with the blue backlight. You know what I mean? And that's it cool. is it is sexy, sexy. Yeah, that that's is pretty cool. cool. Man. You know what I mean? Very cool. You know what I'm saying? Either of you guys have watch winders? I have not, one. Not yet. I have one. I know Do there's you use it? Huh? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, it's it's just sitting there like 
it's controversial, but, right, Fred? I mean, I wouldn't have my watch running all the time just because I'm very picky with them and I feel like they're being overworked. But they look amazing, though. They look pretty cool. They yeah. do look cool. Yeah, so. Especially when you got guests uh, coming over and if you got your office or your bedroom, you're like, all right, I'm going to turn yeah, them I on feel like, so it could look cool. Yeah, if you want to show out. So you have yeah, to. I feel yeah. like if I had, like, a proper office and started working from home, it would be the type of thing I'll just put on my desk. Right, buy, like some like cheap ass Daniel Wellington or something, just put it in there <laughs> just as a watch there. Oh wow! Oh man! All right, I don't know about that, Fred, but <laughs> probably the only circumstance I would buy one. But <laughs> do they even make like, an automatic like, I, watch? It doesn't matter. Pete. I don't know. It's just I, about I feel the like looks. the irony would be the funny <laughs> would be the fun of it. Just seeing how many people come in and be like, "Oh, that's a very that's nice a, watch." Like, right? How much did you no pay idea, for that? Do you? <laughs> you got you got to keep that quartz wind. You got to wind it up. <laughs> you got to wind. Wow. You got you got to wind the quartz. You know, very important. No one likes manually winding quartz. So right, right. Oh man, are a great list, P. I like it. I like it. Well, mine is very simple, but I wanted to go with things that I actually have in in my possession that i've reviewed one of them is bosphorus leather not for everybody it's a little expensive but these guys right here i reviewed this on the channel it's basically a um a watch roll and this specific one is for four watches but the cool thing is and i, I did a review so the cool thing is that each one of these little slots comes apart right so you can have each one of your watches uh, this specific one comes in at almost four hundred dollars. So it was like three hundred and fifty bucks. But so here's the crazy thing. Um, I, I reached out to him on Instagram, and and we worked out not a deal because they gave it to me for free. But we worked out an, an agreement that's like, yeah, I'll send it to you. What are, you know? What are you gonna do? I'll do a video. I'll post it on Instagram. Cool, you know. So when I got it, I was like, all right, all the pictures they have online are nothing but Rolex, Patek, AP. But I, I have Seikos whatever i hope they're okay with that and they didn't care but honestly it just elevates these watches to the next level because it's like well these are expensive watches to me you know why why don't i protect them and why don't i have them in a in a showcase it's nice to me like if i'm gonna impress anybody it's gonna be me right not only that but i i've taken this now to friends and people that know watches and they're blown away they're like dang that's nice that looks expensive and it's like well it is you know there's other less expensive uh brands i'm sure but i could only speak to this one because i have it in my possession bosphorus leather so it's a b-o-s-p-h-o-r-u-s bosphorus dot leather on um on instagram and dot com bosphorus.com leather.com so check them out definitely super cool uh, another thing, obviously, that that Fred kind of uh, talked about is Strapsco, right? So obviously, uh, P. Ross and I are affiliates of them, and and we do have links or whatever. But that's not why I'm bringing it up. I like the versatility; they have a ton of selections. Um, I know the owner, well, P. Ross does too. We know the owner uh, personally and the head of marketing. They're the nicest people you could ever deal with. Um, they're super understanding. If you throw an idea their way or you throw a concern, they'll address it right away. So that's super important to me because mm -hmm. customer service is definitely top of my list with any company. So I could I could definitely stand behind them. Uh, uh, one of the comments that I got was like, oh, their, their leather straps are, were a little underwhelming and not what I expected. But it's like, these are not Houdinki straps. They're not $200 straps. They're not $60 straps. They're what, 20 30 bucks yeah maybe. 20 30 bucks so yeah i know watch gecko and i i have a watch gecko right here i mean the quality on this thing is crazy but this is you know the price of this one's like 60 70 bucks once you get it with shipping and everything as opposed to something from strapsco which you know something like this would be i don't know 20 something bucks and and it feels good you know it's it's comfortable or whatever so that's what i would say and their their nato straps are amazing too they're super soft oh, yeah. super soft so you won't spend a lot of money. Um, and there's other, you know, strap companies, Mora, Mora, something that we, we, we yeah. know the guy and super crazy, supple $16. I mean, these are the best mm -hmm. $16 you could ever spend on a Mora strap. And of course, if you want to spend a little bit more money, these guys from Artham have been nothing but nice to me. They're out of Australia. This is a little bit more, but if you have a really nice watch, this is $80, $90 for the strap, but it's definitely worth every single penny. So Artham, uh, straps, go check them out, and straps, go go check them out. And lastly, I don't have something to showcase, but there's a guy on Instagram that I follow. Amazing, amazing things. I don't know if you guys seen him. Ink Dial. 
at Ink Dial. He just created the John Mayer G Shock. It's like a G. He drew out the G Shock right. with the John Mayer yeah. at the bottom, and he does all these kind of crazy like arts like by hand. And he's he's crazy, man. Like he's amazing. So if you go to at Ink Dial or inkdial.co.uk, he's in Europe somewhere amazing stuff like original uh, drawings he sells he does commission work um amazing stuff and i'll, I'll, I'll i'm giving him a shout out because i love his work you know so artwork really oh, wow, that's and pretty that's, cool i'm just looking at it now yeah that's really down. nicely done yeah so he he has like a completely different style because everything looks very kind of how would you say fred like sketched out almost like he's just sketching it out real quick but the details are crazy yeah and like it's yeah i don't know the word for describing how this style is uh it, like it's almost it's almost like comics yeah like to a degree it's like those sort of right. high quality like if you're familiar mm. with comics like from around the 90s era um like yeah. it reminds me of some of the quality on some of those just it's very hyper detailed yeah but also it still has that sort of artistic quality like it, it's not trying to be a photo you know no. it's no it's detailed but it knows that it's a sketch but it looks really really cool yeah and his prints are the original ones. I mean, it depends how big you want them, but I think they start out like the originals, like in the three hundred dollar range. But I think the copies are like fifty, but or fifty pounds or something like that. Again, I don't know the sizing, but it's pretty cool. I mean, I would love to have something in the collection that maybe I'll commission something to to the guy one day of one of my watches. You get that Seiko done, right? Something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to him. I'll send him a, a message. But no, that's something I recommend is artwork. Obviously, if you're a watch collector or watch lover, even not a collector, just having artwork of watches. I mean, that's really why we get into watches, right? Because of the aesthetic of them. A lot of us do anyway. But uh, mm -hmm. to have artwork, I, I think that's pretty cool. So, Oh, yeah. Sure. Yes, sir. Any, any other artists you guys have seen out there on Instagram or somebody you recommend? I know there's some amazing ones. I can't think right off the top of my head. But... Mm -mm. I can't think of nobody. There's a ton. None that necessarily stand out. But yeah, there's a ton out there. And the good thing is that, like, you know, they're contributing as much to this hobby as Absolutely. any other manufacturer. You know, they're spreading, you know, they're spreading the love of the hobby. And like mm -hmm. you said, that's right. You know, the way these watches look is a huge part of the appeal for them. And being able to surround yourself with watches is, it's great. No matter how, whether it's watches on your wrist, watches on your wall, it's still watches, you know? Yeah, for sure. Right on. For sure. Right. Cool. Uh, any other final gifts you guys want to add outside of your collection, outside of your list? Anything else? Mm -mm. No? I ain't right. got nothing else. Uh, nothing else off the top of my head, no. Make sure you guys have a good microfiber towel to clean your watches. Uh, I, I have oh, a yeah. little one, I think, Watch Gecko? I forgot where it came from. But yeah, a little or something for your eyeglasses, you know, something like this. Right. Way, if you're taking pictures or whatever, or just, just have it with you. Have you can handy. use the Apple one as well. I don't know if they yeah. still do it, but Apple used to give uh, those little microfibers with, um, I know they did it with the laptops. I think they did it with the iPads. Definitely, I, I think I got mine from my laptop, though. Mm. Oh, that's good. Cool. And the good thing is it's pretty small because like, I, I can't stand having these gigantic microfibers. Right, 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 right. My watch is not an index of 50 millimeter you know i don't yeah. need that much surface area to clean my watch mm -hmm. yeah for but sure. like yeah just those little um just a little microfiber you're right it's it goes a long way and it's a pain it, it's just annoying seeing fingerprints on your watch so it's mm -hmm. nice having something handy and just give it that white yeah right. and, and something soft enough that you know you're not going to scratch the watch right so yeah, yeah that's, that's very cool. important as well right all right guys, another well, cool thing to point out too something that was pointed out last year was like watch catalogs yeah you yeah. know what I mean? Still, because uh, I got the Omega one in, and um, uh, I got the Frears watch uh catalog in too. too. Yeah. yeah, so I got one too. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. Very nice, yeah. Nick. If you're listening, that was, that was a nice touch. But uh, anyway, guys, so part of the show, we talk other things. Uh, you're not allowed to talk about Star Wars. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just what? Playing. I'm just playing. I know that's what you guys I'll... are going to talk about, so take it away. <laughs> Fred, P, talk I, I, about I, I, Star I, I, Wars. Pete, do you want to use Star Wars as your other things, or should I? Yeah, yeah. I don't mind either way. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You could go. I'll just chime in with you, and we, you know, we go <laughs> like that, you know. Uh, so, obviously, uh, for most Star Wars fans, the big thing is the Mandalorian. And yes. for anyone who's listened to me and Pete on the podcast, we find every and every, any and every excuse to talk about Star Wars. So, yes. man, it, it's tough not not doing spoilers. But these last few episodes have been something else. Amazing. Like, amazing. 
Oh, like the God. perfect so, balance between bringing new stuff as well as still doing fan service. Like right, after, right. I, I won't reveal why, but um, after last week's episode, um, I had to go back and watch episode two, Attack of the Clones again. Yeah, and yeah. that is, great movie. and that's great one movie. I think, Great movie. I think definitely great underrated. Yeah. Um, it gets a lot of shit, obviously, for a lot of the corny dialogue between Anakin and Padme, but, you know, the whole plot yeah. of... Of uh, like with Kenobi discovering the clone army and then that battle at the end and of course right. in my view one of my favorite villains from Star Wars Count Dooku mm. like there's a lot to like from that yeah. from that oh, and yeah. that was the first time we ever saw Yoda fighting with a lightsaber as well absolutely found how bad Yoda was boy I'm telling you yeah but yeah Attack of the Clones was good man I loved Attack of the Clones um you really saw kind of Anakin's rise where. Like his mother died, and I if, if you ain't saw Attack of that the was Clones, a yet, scene. I don't. Yeah, that was a powerful <laughs> scene when uh, when his mother passed away, and right, he just went killed all the same people. Right, I mm-hmm. wish there was like an expanded, uh, like a deleted scene of seeing that actually play out. Right. Well, it's stories like in uh in the graphic novels, like uh yeah, uh, I think Qui Gon actually told Obi Wan what happened and what was going on with Anakin. Or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it, when you're watching it, it almost sounds a little bit uh, like when you see like Yoda meditating while this is happening right. just after. Right. There is like sort of like a call, like an Anakin no, yeah. which I think was actually Qui Gon's voice. Right. I, think, I don't know yeah. for sure. Yeah. But um, uh-huh. that was a nice little touch. And I know also in the Darth Vader comics and the Marvel ones, um, they also do like a little callback. I think he's right. visiting Tatooine. I forget why yeah. I, I read. I read it a while ago, like right. a year ago, something like that. Yeah, and and then he sort of reminisces on on that particular scene. So I think that's right. sort of the big pivotal scene where you see him yeah. sort of descending into the dark side. Right. Yeah. But then he had his rise when he kind of married Padme. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that was like Bro. to equal it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. He lost his mother exactly. gained a wife. So yeah, exactly. Re- 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 really, really interesting stuff, man. What you got, Miguel? Yeah. <laughs> God, that was boring. <laughs> okay, sorry, I had some doubt. What? <laughs> no, but I'll, 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 I'll go inside, check the Mandalorian out, child. I'm telling you, it is. You don't yeah. even have to watch. Like you, I think you do have to know a little bit of Star Wars history to watch the Mandalorian. But I don't I, think I don't think you need too much. I think that's one of the you know I mean? good things about it. Like if you've seen the movies and if you follow it, then it just makes it that much better. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I think you don't have to have very much if any prior knowledge no. No, like no, to no, enjoy no. the Mandalorian. Right. No, not at all. So now so, now, now we don't have no spoilers, Fred. No spoilers. Who do you think this is this is merely speculation. Who do you okay. think the Jedi that is coming in the last episode? Oh it's it's tough because there are still some surviving, but I am, I, I'm talking between, I want to see it, but at the same time, I don't want to see them fuck it up. But at the same time, if anyone's going to do it right, I think it's them. I yeah. want to see it be Luke Skywalker. And yes. we had talked about this on, um, on Instagram, on, right. on DMs. I want to see it be Sebastian Stan, just because yeah. Mark Hamill yeah. is, right. I don't want to see like a D8, a D8 right. Mark Hamill. Yeah. And I yeah, think Mark sure. Hamill's age is still, too far ahead of when this right. takes place. Right, yeah. So I'd like to see it be Luke Skywalker. Um, yeah. I think you had mentioned maybe Leia could have been a potential. That's one potential. I don't want them to do because I I don't know who they would cast as right. as Leia. Right. right. You know, like uh, Carrie on Lost, may she rest in peace. But um, but yeah, sorry, Carrie Fisher. Why, why am I saying Carrie on Lost? Too many Carries in, <laughs> too many good Carries right. in cinema. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but but yeah, like uh, I think I I just don't know who they could possibly cast as Leia. But that's another thing is that Mandalorian has yeah. done some solid casting. I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. Um, for Ahsoka, like they hit that on oh, the head, and that was on and nail. that was and that was like a perfect fan service. Yeah, because obviously, um, if you follow, there's this uh, graphic artist called Boss Logic, mm-hmm. and he he did he did the fan poster of it, and it's like it made total sense. You know, right, she right. looked the part. She brought the character yeah. there. Mm-hmm. Like I think that was that was a really good casting. So yeah, yeah I I I'm still gunning for it being um being Luke, or if not, 
it would be cool seeing Samuel L. Jackson Mace Windu. Oh, that would be like hot. so. Because that ain't really sort of like, confirmed he died, though, for real. It, it yeah, well, I think at one point, I think um, he uh, either he tweeted it out or he said it in an interview. He's like, you know, well, you know, Jedi are, have demonstrated plenty of times that they're capable of falling or you right, know, jumping from, huge distances. Just, and Well, he did know, it in okay, Attack so. of the Clones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, you you know, know, the man lands on his feet. Right. Uh-huh. Well, one thing, though, I That'd hope he's hot. like... I hope he's like a, a really cranky Mace Windu. I really like when I was watching Attack of the Clones, I was like, how did he not manage to say motherfucker during this movie? Right. So I, I, I want to see right. just a pissed off Mace Windu. Right. <laughs> like, you know, because, you know, he borders, the, he borders the dark side. So, you know. Yeah, exactly. So and I want to see him maybe have given in a little bit. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a pretty cool take as well. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Miguel? Okay, um, I apologize <laughs> to everybody listening. I, I these guys are obsessed with Star Wars. I have no idea what they, I don't know what they were talking about. <laughs> Luke Skywalker, I know the lady that died, I know, and that's all I know. But, um, anyway, Star Wars, I love it. Um, yeah, baby Star Yoda. Wars, you love it. Yeah, baby Yoda all day. He know. has a name, he has a name. Yeah, he's in his he has a name. Baby no, it Yoda. ain't baby, it's not baby Yoda. He has an actual name. Now. What's baby his name? Yeah. Right? Put some respect on his name. What's Grogu. Name? Grogu. Trump. Oh. Grogu. Grogu? Grogu. Oh, Grogu. Okay, sounds like a soup. I don't Grogu. know. Grogu. Yeah, it does. <laughs> but he is he is fond of soup. He's demonstrated to be fond of soup. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you guys are mm. too much. <laughs> Other things for me, like we got four minutes left. Um, honestly, just Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. If not, you know... Um, Hope everybody's staying safe out there. Oh, yeah. Hope everybody has a good time. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and uh, this video. If you're watching on YouTube, please comment, like, subscribe. And if you are listening to this, please do rate us. You know, we we, we do this out of uh, out of passion. We, we love what we do, but it definitely does help when you rate us and, and it puts us higher. So more people could actually find this podcast. We're 55 episodes in and we, we need more subscribers. 55. We need more so anyway, wow. Fred. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate you coming on. It's been a long journey. Pleasure as always. Great to be back, especially for the Christmas episode. We yes, had to. Sir. We had to do it right, man. We couldn't bring anybody else but family, you know? So we, we yeah. appreciate you coming on. So Fred, where can uh, people find you? People can find me on YouTube, Shaluso, Instagram at Shaluso, Facebook, Shaluso. And as always, make sure to check me out on MySpace's uh, <laughs> Mongolian counterpart, my spas <laughs> slash shabuso. Okay. Uh, P. Ross. Okay. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Happy Hanukkah. Feliz Navidad. All that. Yeah, see? See what nice, I'm saying? Nice, see what I'm saying? Nice. See, see what you did there. All right. You know what I mean? Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, Ralph's Wrist Watch Love Everywhere, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram. Sounds and, good. And, and the black version of MySpace. You know what I'm saying? Black and, and don't forget And don't forget OnlyFans. You right. You got that OnlyFans my, my, account. My OnlyFans is off the hook. It's jumping off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, we got women. We got... No, nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Nice. Well, don't forget to check me out on TikTok where I do all kinds of moves <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> no i'm just kidding we're going we're that, okay. that was that was well okay we'll talk about that afterwards okay we'll, we'll talk about my dance moves later with my tiktok account and watches on my wrists no i can't do that that was that was all up ross when jody gave you a shout out with your little oh with watch the, moves uh, was, <laughs> with yeah. the casios <laughs> But no, yeah, SoCal, yeah. SoCal Watch Reviews on YouTube, on Instagram, and Relojando in Spanish. And of course, this podcast. So we, we got to keep it going. Hopefully everybody enjoyed uh, the content and we'll, we'll keep bringing more. We promise you that. And Fred, don't be a stranger. We'd love to have you on. So, No doubt, man. No doubt. All right, my friends. Well, everybody out there listening, thank you once again and stay humble.